two engines had agreed to be timed in their runs pulling the Midday Express, as both Allen and Sir Ralph were not equipped with corridor tenders for the longer runs. Further, they would only reveal the times of their runs after both of them had pulled their respective trains. The other engines waited that long week for another argument to erupt, but it didn't happen. Alan was not speaking to any of them, and Sir Ralph was much busier than normal, with the late holiday goers forcing more timetabled trains. Sir Ralph had just been cleaned. His brass work shone like gold, and his whistle gleamed in the August sunrise. Marvellous, he said, proudly, puffing out of the yard and working his way across towards the main station. He backed down onto his coaches. Alan was waiting at the other platform. Well, don't wait too long, Sir Ralph said sweetly. I'll have this train to Newcastle and back in two shakes of a shunter's pole. Alan simply blew off steam, smiling. Sir Ralph snorted and puffed away. Sir Ralph had a good run. No signal seemed to be against him. He puffed quickly over the viaduct. The passengers got in and out quickly at the stations, and soon he could see the tall chimneys of the Newcastle factories on the skyline. He returned to the yard early the next morning, and found Alan waiting, impatiently. Morning, young Alan, Sir Ralph said. Have a good run. Just you wait, Alan muttered. I'm going to wipe the rails with you. And with that, he puffed out of the yard and towards the big station. Stephen called out, Good luck! And grudgingly, Alan whistled back. Alan backed down onto the train. He watched the passengers boarding with angst. Come along quickly now, he said anxiously, his safety valves hissing noisily. Suddenly, it all seemed to happen at once. The guard blew his whistle, his driver opened his regulator, and Alan snorted out of the big station, gathering speed. The train was heavy, and as they crossed the viaduct, Alan refused to tire. I must beat him, I must beat him, he panted, and began to speed up, but his driver checked him. Steady, boy, he said, closing the regulator. We don't want to come off the rails. Alan was cross, and as they approached the junction, he saw that the signal was set to danger. Oh no, he said crossly, and began to slow. But as they approached the signal, it lifted. Away we go, Alan, his driver said, and Alan hastily accelerated away. Crossing the viaduct, Alan felt the wind at his wheels and was spurred on ever faster. It was nearly two o'clock when he could see the smog on the horizon, and presently the very same chimney Sir Ralph had seen towered above him. Alan returned to the shed later that afternoon, and all of the engines were there, eagerly awaiting the results. He backed down next to Sir Ralph, and let off steam. Well, I have the results. The foreman was there, standing between the lines. Mr Cecil, the timekeeper, was very pleased with the two runs. However, with a time of 1 hour, 45 minutes, the winner is Sir Ralph. All the engines, except Sir Ralph of course, gave a mighty groan. This time is a particularly good run for an A4 Pacific, with an average speed of 82 miles an hour. The foreman continued, however, Mr Cecil expressed the opinion that Allen's run was more significant. The engines were perplexed. Alan made the same run in one hour and 52 minutes, the foreman said, which, while seven minutes slower than Sir Ralph, is five minutes quicker than any other run by engines of his class and power. This seemed to be of little consolation to Alan. I still lost, he said downcast. Yes, you did, Sir Ralph said loftily. However, I concede that your run was the better of the two. Alan was speechless. I was built for speed, Sir Ralph went on, and to come within five minutes of me is a great feat for any engine. So, I bow to you, Alan. It was a tremendous run, and the A4 puffed grandly away. Stephen pulled up alongside Alan. You did very well, he said, smiling. You were right, though, Alan said, smiling ruefully. I'm... Apology accepted, old friend, Stephen interrupted. We have something rather more important to discuss now, however. What's that? I wish I knew. What's got into Sir Ralph? And all the engines agreed. Sir Ralph acting nice? 
What exactly had happened at the works while he'd been away? I'm afraid for you and I, that's another story. But for Alan and the Fair Maid Express, the story was just beginning.